NASA's SLS rocket is finally about to launch. After over 10 years of hard work building and testing the most powerful rocket they've ever built, NASA will roll the Space Launch System out to Launch Pad 39B on August the 18th for a launch on August the 29th. This will be a historic launch, the first launch of a crew-capable vehicle into cislunar space for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972. But the rocket that will roll out to 39B for the Artemis 1 mission will not be the final iteration of this massive vehicle. Despite standing up to 322 feet tall and producing 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, this rocket is actually the smallest and least powerful iteration of the Space Launch System. The SLS rocket actually has three distinct variants known as blocks, with each one being bigger and more capable than the last. But what are these blocks and why are they even needed in the first place? Today, we will be taking a look into the block system of the Space Launch System. In order to understand the block system of the SLS rocket, we first need to understand what a block even is. In the world of spaceflight, a block can mean a major upgrade to an existing rocket that changes key parts about a rocket's design. A fantastic example of this is the already flying Falcon 9. The version of SpaceX's rapidly reusable rocket flying today is known as the Falcon 9 Block 5. But before the Block 5, there was the Block 4 and the Block 3. For an in-depth explanation of the block system for the Falcon 9 rockets, go check out Tim Dodd's video on the subject by clicking the link in the title card that should be appearing now. SLS in this respect is very similar. It has three blocks. The first block is the version of the rocket that NASA has just finished building and is currently preparing for its maiden flight to the moon. This is the SLS Block 1. The SLS Block 1 rocket is the original version of the rocket that was mandated by Congress all the way back in 2010. As such, it is the variant that has the most in common with NASA's former workhorse rocket, the Space Shuttle. The rocket itself consists of two incredibly powerful five-segment solid rocket boosters, an incredibly efficient and massive core stage, as well as a small second stage used to propel the Orion spacecraft onto a translunar injection. The original plan for SLS was to get it built and enter into operation as soon as possible. As we now know, this did not happen. But in their attempt to make that happen, NASA built the SLS Block 1 rocket with as much pre-existing hardware as they possibly could. This meant that the engines that would power this monster were going to be the veteran RS-25D main engines that had already been powering the space shuttles to orbit for years. And in addition to this, the solid rocket boosters, despite having an additional fifth segment, were the exact same boosters that had been powering the shuttles off the launch pad for decades prior. Lastly, the tiny upper stage that tops off the rocket, known as the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, is a slightly modified version of United Launch Alliance's already flying Delta Cryogenic Second Stage. Altogether, the SLS Block 1 rocket stands 322 feet in height, produces 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, has a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 95 metric tons, and has a payload capacity to a translunar injection of 27 metric tons. Its first launch is currently set for August 29th of 2022. On its own, it is already the second largest and second most capable rocket to ever complete development, as well as the most powerful rocket to ever enter operations. Despite this, it is still the third smallest, least capable, and least powerful variant of the SLS rocket. The second variant of the SLS rocket increases both the size of the rocket and its capabilities. This is the SLS Block 1B. The first three flights of the Space Launch System, those being Artemis 1, 2, and 3, will feature the original SLS Block 1 rocket as a mere crew transport to and from the moon. But on Artemis 4, the upgraded and far, far more capable SLS Block 1B, the second iteration of the mighty moon rocket, will be debuted. Taller, more powerful, and just as capable as the Saturn V of the Apollo era, the SLS Block 1B is to be NASA's new workhorse rocket for the upcoming Artemis program. On the surface, the SLS Block 1B rocket looks a lot different than the SLS Block 1 rocket that flew before it. But, in reality, only three parts of the rocket are actually being upgraded for this new variant. The first of these parts to receive an upgrade is the Launch Vehicle Stage Adapter. This is the conical adapter that connects the gigantic core stage to the much smaller Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage. On the Block 1B SLS, this adapter becomes cylindrical and increases in height. The next part to receive an upgrade is the tiny Orion stage adapter. 
First flown on Exploration Flight Test 1, this adapter connects the Delta Cryogenic Second Stage, or in SLS's case, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, to the slightly wider Orion spacecraft. In addition to this, the Orion Stage adapter is also used to carry payloads such as small CubeSats so they can hitch a ride to the moon with Orion. The upgraded adapter will be far, far larger known as not the Orion Stage Adapter, but rather the Universal Stage Adapter. This adapter will be as wide as the SLS Core Stage and have a volume of 10,100 cubic feet, which is only slightly less than the 10,600 cubic feet of the Space Shuttle cargo hold. And just like the Orion Stage Adapter, it too will carry payloads to the moon with the Orion spacecraft, but not small CubeSats, no, this Stage Adapter will carry entire space station modules to the moon. And lastly, the final upgrade to the SLS Block 1 comes to the ICPS. The tiny upper stage that can only just push Orion to the moon will be replaced by a monster rocket stage. Using a similar design philosophy to the smaller ICPS, this new stage, known as the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS for short, will look like a truly massive version of the tiny rocket stage on the SLS Block 1. In addition to a size increase, the EUS will utilize four of the upcoming RL-10C3 engines, where the ICPS used only a single RL-10C2 engine. In addition to these three upgrades, there is another important upgrade that comes around for the second flight of the SLS Block 1B. The SLS Block 1 uses the veteran Space Shuttle main engines that were previously flown on shuttle flights. Specifically, the SLS will be using the last variant of this engine, the RS-25D engine to be specific. There is not, however, an unlimited supply of these engines. At the end of the shuttle program, 16 RS-25D main engines were left over, and seeing as SLS uses 4 of them per flight, they will run out of engines by Artemis 5, the second flight of the SLS Block 1B. Which means that from Artemis 5 onwards, new engines will be needed. This is a sort of soft, fourth Block 1B upgrade. The upgrade to the RS-25E, an expendable, cheaper, and better performing variant of the old shuttle design. Altogether, these parts will combine with the original parts of the SLS Block 1 rocket to create a vehicle that stands 364 feet in height, produces 8.9 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, has a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 105 metric tons, and has a payload capacity to a translunar injection of 45 metric tons. Its first launch is currently set for 2026. When completed, the SLS Block 1B will be the largest, most powerful, and most capable flying machine NASA has ever built in its history, finally surpassing the legendary Saturn V of old. But NASA is not done just yet. There is yet another variant of the SLS rocket that is poised to carry the mighty vehicle into f even further futures. This is the final variant, the Space Launch System Block 2. After its maiden flight in 2026 carrying the IHAB module to the Lunar Gateway, the SLS Block 1B will only have 5 additional launches left, totaling a whole 6 launches of the vehicle before this Block 2 is retired just like the Block 1 before it. This will then pave the way for the SLS Block 2 rocket to take to the skies for the Artemis 10 mission sometime in the 2030s. But why get rid of SLS Block 1B at all? It already matches the capabilities of the Saturn V and surpasses the abilities of the SLS Block 1, so it seems perfectly fine to continue on carrying the program for many years to come. Well, it all comes down to the final upgrade of the Space Launch System. Where the SLS Block 1 is a child of the shuttle, the SLS Block 2 finally rids itself of its space shuttle past, getting rid of the last element tying it to NASA's most iconic of rockets. NASA envisions that SLS will be their workhorse rocket for the next 30 years, just like their space shuttle. This means that the vehicle won't be retired until the 2050s, which is a bit of a problem. This is because when the shuttle retired, it left behind a limited supply of parts for SLS and Orion. The RS-25D runs out on Artemis 4. The orbital maneuvering system engines run out on Artemis 6, and the solid rocket boosters run out on Artemis 9. Just like the RS-25D, which needed to be replaced by the RS-25E, the Space Shuttle Solid Rocket Boosters are going to be replaced by a brand new, modernized version of the Shuttle Solid Rocket Boosters, designed to be expendable, far cheaper, and more capable than their predecessors. 
These new boosters will be the final upgrade to the Space Launch System. Known as BOL, an acronym for Booster Obsolescence and Life Extension, these boosters will power every flight of the Space Launch System in the 2030s and the 2040s. This is the final upgrade to the SLS rocket, getting rid of the last piece of hardware tying it to the Space Shuttle, a fully modernized, fully capable Monster Moon rocket. Altogether, these parts will combine with the original parts of the SLS Block 1 and Block 1B rocket to create a vehicle that stands 364 feet in height, produces 9.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, has a payload capacity to low Earth orbit of 130 metric tons, and has a payload capacity to a translunar injection of over 46 metric tons. Its first launch is currently set for the early 2030s. And this is, in essence, what the point of the block system is. NASA started out with a space plane mounted on the back of a rocket, and their goal this entire time has been to slowly strip away the old rocket for a brand new and much more capable new rocket. And SLS Block 2 is that new rocket. With no heritage from the shuttle at all, it is the definitive version of the SLS rocket. These different variations of SLS all serve different purposes. The SLS Block 1 was to bridge the gap between a space shuttle and a moon rocket. SLS Block 1B takes that moon rocket and creates a rocket that rivals the Saturn V. And lastly, the SLS Block 2 takes that Saturn V style rocket and continues its legacy decades into the future. And that is the block system of the Space Launch System. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We're getting really close to the first ever launch of the SLS rocket, and so I'm going to try to get a lot more videos out as that day gets closer, so stay tuned for those. I would also like to give a shout out to my channel members, Would Die for Chamuske, Myers, and Firefly2806. Thank you guys for sticking around and supporting the channel. If you'd like to get a shout out at the end of my videos, consider becoming a channel member. And with that, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.